One of the most puzzling and baffling questions, at least as far as I'm concerned, surrounding the Delphi murders is why it took law enforcement so long to locate who was responsible for the Anthony Schott's profile. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my own thoughts and feelings regarding this issue and also a possible explanation as to why it took law enforcement this long. Now, one of the biggest issues that I have concerning the Delphi murders, particularly since we've had the recent release of the Keegan Klein transcripts from his August 19th, 2020 police interview, is the fact that we have some discussion during that interview regarding the Anthony Schott's profile. It's mentioned in that police interview that the Anthony Schott's profile was communicating with the girls on the morning of their disappearance. And not only that, but after the murders, this profile is communicating with friends of Liberty German, stating that he was due to meet them at the bridge, or meet Liberty at the bridge that day, and she never showed up. Now, when you find two dead bodies and one of these individuals has their cell phone on them, what is the first thing that you do? Surely you go through that phone with a fine tooth comb to find out who she was speaking to, who she was discussing stuff with, who she was due to meet that day, who she was in communication with in the days leading up to her death. Now, what I believe has happened here is that the police have come across these messages from the Anthony Schott's profile, which of course they would have done. They would have either recovered these messages if they'd been deleted, which I don't really see as a possibility, but let's just say for instance that Liberty did in fact delete the messages from the morning of February the 13th before they went to the bridge, then those messages would have been at some point recovered. They've got the messages from the Anthony Schott's profile. They have statements from Friends of Liberty who have come forward and obviously said, well, she was due to meet this guy called Anthony at the bridge. You know, this wasn't some sort of well-hidden secret. Her friends knew exactly who she was going to meet on the day of her disappearance. And what I believe has happened here is that the police have found this profile, they found the, found the Anthony Schott's profile, and they actually believed that Ron Logan was the Anthony Schott's profile. I think that this is where the investigation has started to go wrong at such an early stage. So let's just surmise for one moment that even if these messages on Liberty's phone were deleted, the conversations between the Anthony Schott's profile and Liberty were deleted before the meetup on the bridge, then the next thing you're going to do naturally is to speak to those closest to Liberty German, not just her family, but her friends, schoolmates, anyone who may have had some sort of idea as to what was taking place that morning or what their plans were for that day. And it's clear here because in the transcript of the Keegan Klein interviews, the interviewing officers clearly state there that we have statements from Liberty's friends saying that she was going to meet Anthony Schotts at the bridge. It's clearly stated there. So the police had this information at an incredibly early stage in the investigation. One of the reasons that I say this is because what is also mentioned during that Keegan Klein interview regarding the ski mask incident. Now, it's mentioned there that the ski mask incident was the event which set off this whole chain of events. But when I thought about that, I thought, well, surely that doesn't make any logical sense because they recovered Liberty's phone, they would have spoken to people close to Liberty, and this Anthony Schott's profile would have come up a lot sooner. So I think what they've done is that they've found this Anthony Schott's account, they've attributed this or tried to attribute this to Ron Logan. They think actually this is the guy, you know, he's in his 70s, he's pretending to be this young guy. It all sort of makes sense in their head that Ron Logan is behind the Anthony Schott's account. What also points me in that direction is the actual search warrant that was put forward for Ron Logan's property. At point four of that search warrant, they claim that they want to look for the following items. Computers and computer equipment, digital storage devices, tapes, cassettes, cartridges, streaming tape, commercial software and hardware, computer disks, flash drives, disk drives, monitors, computer printers, modems, tape drives, disk application programs, data disks, 
system disk operating systems, magnetic media floppy disks, computer software, hardware and software operating manuals, tape systems and hard drive and other computer related operation equipment, digital cameras, scanners, in addition to computer photographs, graphic interchange formats and or photographs, undeveloped photographic film, slides or other visual depictions of such graphic interchange format equipment and the data stored within these materials, which has been used or may be used to store evidence of the crime, research ways to conceal a crime or destroy a crime scene. So it's fairly clear, at least to me here, that they're very interested in Ron Logan's computer equipment and other media storage devices. So could it be that very early on, the fact that these two girls are found on Ron Logan's property, he's more of an older gentleman, this profile was that of a teenager or someone pretending to be a teenager, did it make sense to the FBI operatives at that stage that Ron Logan was the Anthony Schott's account? And it wasn't until the event with the ski mask incident and the fact that they traced that back to the Anthony Schott's account as well, that they actually realised it couldn't be Ron Logan. It's also mentioned further down in Ron Logan's affidavit that they wished to search for any and all tablets, phones, iPad devices and any and all other electronic devices which may contain digital data. Any and all computer data including but not limited to photographs, videos, documents, emails and sound files which may contain evidence of the violations of the criminal statutes listed at the beginning of this affidavit. So clearly they're interested in a lot of his electronical devices here. Now this is obviously quite commonplace in terms of searching um, someone's property for this type of crime, possibly a sexually motivated crime against uh, two young girls. Obviously this is what you would normally search for in any case. But I do wonder why it took law enforcement so long to link the Anthony Schott's account to Keegan Klein, but then somehow go off of Keegan Klein and onto another area. I think what confuses me mostly regarding the Anthony Schott's profile is that it's stated in the interview with Keegan Klein that the ski mask incident, which occurs on the 20th of February, so seven days after the murders, it's that event which sparks off the tracking down of the Anthony Schott's account. And I just can't really understand that. Even, as I say, even if there were no messages on Liberty German's phone, which I actually believe there probably was, but even if there wasn't any messages between herself and the Anthony Schott's profile, those friends who were close to Liberty knew exactly who she was going to meet on that day. They were aware of the Anthony Schott's profile and would have pointed the police in that direction. Yet we're led to believe that the ski mask incident seven days afterwards was the event which led them to the Anthony Schott's profile. Now when taking a look at the timeline concerning these individuals, Keegan Klein, the Anthony Schott's catfishing profile and Ron Logan, there does seem to be a very strange disconnect, I guess you could say, in terms of the timeline between these individuals. So we have the ski mask incident which apparently leads law enforcement to the house of Keegan Klein. That search warrant is executed on the 25th of February. Yet they're then applying for a search warrant for Ron Logan on March the 17th. It's almost like it's a bit backwards here. Surely when they find the bodies, they find the phone, they locate this Anthony Schott's profile, even if they didn't from Liberty German's phone, they speak to friends, they speak to relatives of these two girls. They realised that they were going to meet Anthony that day at the bridge. The Anthony Schott's profile surely very early on, you know, within days, within 24 hours of these bodies being discovered, surely the Anthony Schott's persona, the Anthony Schott's profile, is the very top of the pile. So what we have here is the search warrant being executed on Keegan Klein on the 25th of February, but then for some reason they go back to Ron Logan and apply for this warrant on March the 17th. So it's almost like the Anthony Schott's profile either hasn't been connected to the deaths of Liberty German and Abigail Williams, they're, they can't find this connection here, or they're not putting, I guess, too much emphasis on this account playing some part in the murders, or they believe that other people are involved with the Anthony Schott's account. And I'm not just talking about Keegan Klein and Tony Klein, 
Could it have been that they actually thought that Ron Logan was somehow involved or people from the dark web, the dark net, some sort of ring that's involved? Because nothing makes logical sense here in terms of this account only recently being you know, discussed in the public domain. It's very, very strange. As I say, this was a public profile. This Anthony Schott's profile was out there for everybody to see. It wasn't hidden. This isn't some sort of dark net or deep web group who are, you know, sophisticated in hiding their identity and, you know, um, I guess hiding from surveillance. Um, so none of it makes any sense to me. Either something's gone terribly, terribly wrong here during the investigation process, or as I say, they believe that other individuals are connected with this, with this account. Maybe there's been some level of surveillance taking place. Maybe other individuals or users of that account are a little bit more sophisticated in terms of hiding their own identity. Maybe this runs a lot deeper in terms of the connections to that account and that whole ring in general. The only other possibility that I can possibly imagine as to why the Anthony Schott's account wasn't taken as the highest priority at the earliest possible opportunity is if law enforcement really, really did put too much stock into that video of the man on the bridge. The person who some sort of, you know, sort of vaguely resembles Ron Logan could be presumed to be that individual, someone who dressed like him. I'm not talking so much about the physical stature of the man or ne not necessarily his voice, but the way in which he was dressed, the fact that these girls were found on his land. The, the dress sense of this guy on the bridge was fairly similar to that of Ron Logan. Ron Logan's ex-partners coming forward and talking about their, you know, their dealings with Ron Logan in the past. Did they really get stuck on Ron Logan and overlook what was staring them straight in the face? Did they ignore the friends of Liberty German who, you know, who have actually come forward and made statements and said, that's where, they were going, that's where they were going that day. They were going to the bridge to meet Anthony. I spoke to him after they were murdered. Um, you know, they've recovered these messages. What is it about this Anthony Schott's account? And what direction did law enforcement think that account pointed to at the very early stages of this investigation? Anyway, many thanks for joining me for today's video. Please feel free to leave your own thoughts and theories in the comments section below. I'll be sure to check those out. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more Delphi content. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Take care. Cheers.